Hello students and welcome to chapter number one. In this chapter we, we will introduce what management is, we will talk about the different duties of managers, what skills do they require, and then later we will introduce the history and the development of the field of management. So we start with why do we need managers? Why are managers important? We need managers because nowadays the business environment itself is so complicated, is so complex because of things like globalization, because of things like increased competitiveness, things are becoming more difficult for companies. And for that reason, we need better managers to run and oversee the entire business. And as I have mentioned during our lecture, uh, we say always that people do not leave their jobs, they leave their bosses, which means that the relationship between employees and managers are extremely important and they determine things like loyalty they determine things like whether or not you're going to be productive whether or not you're going to work for this company for as long as possible so this is why managers are needed we need their skills we need their abilities because things nowadays in companies in the business environment are becoming so difficult and so complicated and so chaotic to the point where we need competent good people to run that business and to supervise people. And now moving on to who are managers. So here's a formal definition of what a manager is. It is someone who coordinates and oversees or supervises the work of other people so that organizational goals can be accomplished. So a manager is a person who basically does two main things. They coordinate between people, so they make people come together and work together, and then they oversee, they supervise, they monitor, they control things. So basically they get work done through others. What is the purpose, what is the goal of all of this? Is to ensure that the goals of the, of the organization is being accomplished so that the goals of organizations are being accomplished. It is important that you understand that the job of a manager ultimately is basically getting the organization where it needs to be. And for the organization to achieve its goals, they need employees, they need people, and they need managers who supervise these employees so that they can get everything done. So a manager is a person, is someone in the organization who monitors, who supervises, and who also coordinates the efforts and the jobs of different people in different sections or in different departments. And now that we know that managers are people in the organization who just run things and coordinate and oversee the work of others, we also have to understand, and you have probably you, you probably have already seen in different organizations, in different companies, how there are different levels of managers. There are small bosses and there are very big bosses. So at the very bottom of this uh, of this triangle, you have at the very bottom the very lower part you have non-managerial employees non-managerial meaning they are non-managers they do not manage they do not have people who work under their supervision so that's someone like me and maybe like you when you go for your co-op you are not a leader you are not a manager you do not have a department to run and oversee and then just above it you have first line managers and so first line managers are the ones who supervise non-managerial employees. So like my direct supervisor, my boss, is a first line manager. And then middle managers. Middle managers are those who run other managers. Are those who run other managers. So if we were to give an example over here from the college, from JUC, I am a non-managerial employee. Why? Because I, I do not have uh, the authority to give others orders. But my direct supervisor is a first-line manager. So for example, Dr. Bassam Al-Aqil, who is the chairman of the business department, he is a first-line manager. And then Dr. Saleh Al-Zahrani, the deputy of academic affairs, is a middle manager. Why? Because he runs 
he manages other first line managers. So who works under Dr. Saleh al-Zahrani? The chairman of the business department, the chairman of the computer science department, the chairman of the general studies department, and so on. So he is a manager who manages managers. So he is a middle manager. And then at the very top, you have those very big bosses, top managers. We talk about people like CEOs. We talk about people like vice presidents, presidents of companies. Wuzara, مثلا. So these are top managers. And they make big decisions that affect not only you know, the people who work under them, but the, their decisions affect and impact the entire organization. So here you have to understand that there are different levels of managers and you have to make sure that you know which group do they manage. So this slide basically explains what we just mentioned. You have to understand that we have non-managerial employees who manage no one. Then you have first line managers who manage the work of non-managerial employees, middle managers who manage managers, and then top managers, CEOs, presidents who basically run an entire organization, uh, an entire organization, and they make very big decisions. Okay, now since the beginning of this show, we have been saying this word over and over again, organization. What is an organization? So JUC is an organization. Mustashf al Mana is an organization. Jamia Tahfid al Quran is an organization. So what is an organization? It's a deliberate arrangement of people. So it's a group of people working together in a certain order and they are assembled to accomplish some specific purpose. So why are they organized in this way? The reason is they need to achieve some goal. So individuals independently could not accomplish alone. Basically, if I would work alone, my boss would work alone, Dr. Saleh would work alone, we would never accomplish the goals of JUC. Never. But by working together under JUC, under this organization, we are organized in a certain way so that we can accomplish the goals of JUC, which could be things like you know, providing you with education. So this takes us to the common uh, characteristics of organizations. Meaning, so how would you describe organizations? What makes them different? How would you say, now this is an organization, this is not an organization? You have to find out about these three different characteristics. Organizations have a distinct purpose or goal. They have a specific goal that it needs to accomplish. And of course, organizations are composed of people. People make up these organizations. Without people, there is no organization. And then finally, any organization has a deliberate structure. You have a CEO, then you have vice presidents, then you have general managers, then you have department managers, then you have supervisors, and then you have specialists, you have engineers. So there is a structure. There is uh, uh, an orderly way of how people report to one another things uh, uh, that make uh, it, that make it clear what is the relationship between me and someone else do we work in the same department or not is he my boss am I his boss so this these are the characteristics of organizations there is a goal um, people make up these organizations and there is a deliberate structure. There is a way, an orderly way of how things are done in organizations. And this uh, uh, graph or exhibit is basically a summary of what we just explained. So three important things that you need to know about organizations. How do you say A is an organization, B is not an organization? So you measure them, you give them that test does this thing has a distinct purpose does it have a structure and is it made up of people so we have explained what management is we have explained what organizations are so let's talk a little now about you know what what managers do so someone who works as a manager what exactly do they do they come to work from seven o'clock to four o'clock what do they do 
We mentioned two main activities before. We mentioned that they coordinate the efforts of people and that they also oversee or supervise the work of others. But how do they do this? How do they coordinate? How do they supervise? They have, and we mentioned before that the reason behind all of this is that they need to achieve the goals of the organization. But how do they achieve these goals? They must do so in an efficient and in an effective way. These are very important terms that you will encounter also in future courses. You will study operations management, you will study total quality management, you will study so many other courses in which these two concepts are repeated. So you have to have a good grasp of what is efficiency and what is effectiveness. And in here we try to tackle this. So efficiency basically is doing things in the right way. What do we what do we mean by this? Let's give this very small story. So you, someone comes to JUC and they say that we can install a very good system. You know the system that we use for adding and dropping courses. I can give you a better system than the one that you are using right now. But for that, you are going to have to pay me 5 million Saudi Riyals and then you have to change all your computers, you have to change all the cables, you have to change all the network, you have to do a lot of things only so that the, only then the system will work. We say this is not really an efficient way of doing things because we can install another system without having to change our computers, without having to change our cables, without having to, to do all of this. So efficiency is about input and output. If, you, if we were to call something or a process or a project or whatever efficient, it means that we get the most output for the least input. So we could install a better system without a lot of input, without having to change our PCs, without having to change our cables, and so on. Effectiveness, on the other hand, is about the purpose, is about the goal, doing the right things. So what is the purpose of a car? What is the goal of a car? Why do you buy a car? You buy a car to take you from point A to point B. So if a car does take you from point A to point B, you say this is an effective car because it, it has achieved its purpose. But if the car is so damaged, if the car is not good and it breaks down in the middle of the road, so it didn't take you from point A to your destination, now you can say, well, this is not an effective car. So this is effectiveness. Does the thing that you are doing uh, achieve its goal? So efficiency is about resources, efficiency is about input and output, it's about doing things in the right way, and then effectiveness is whether or not, uh, you know, the thing that you're doing is actually uh, achieving the purpose. You bring a new system, for example, into JUC, the point or the, the purpose, the goal of the system is to make things easier, faster, you know, to avoid all these problems that we are facing every semester. So if the system that you bring doesn't do all of this, then we cannot call it a very effective system. Okay? So efficiency again, resources, input, and output. Effectiveness is about the goal. And here's a nice exhibit or summary that shows what efficiency means and what effectiveness is all about. It's simply a, simply a repetition of just what we just explained, but I know some of you are more visual. They like to see things put in graphs, so here's a good one for you. And now moving on to the functions of management. So what is involved in management? We mentioned before that there were two main activities that managers do. They supervise, they oversee, and they also coordinate. But in here we talk about any manager in any organization, regardless of their job title, they do these four main things. زي ما ذكرنا في المحاضرة مشرف مبيعات ورئيس شركة سابق ومدير الموارد البشرية 
قائد المدرسة حتى All of these people They are managers And they work in different types of organizations Different uh, sizes uh, Organizations of different sizes But all of them They do these four main things They are involved in these management functions So they plan They organize They lead And they control When it comes to planning The first thing what what is a plan when you are, now you are on your weekend and you set a plan for this weekend what um what am i going to do in this weekend so what is a plan a plan is about defining goals and how am i going to achieve this goal okay so they when i say they i mean managers they set goals they say that we want to increase our sales by 5% and then they have to decide how are we going to achieve this goal a manager in JUC for example would say I would like to start a new major a new program maybe a degree in software engineering now this is a goal now how am I going to achieve that goal maybe I will contact some universities here in the kingdom and tell them what do they do and then I will come up with my own degree plan so that's planning for you the second function is organizing so organization is all about arrangement so arranging and structuring work to accomplish the goals of the organization we have to always keep in mind that everything that managers do everything it's all about in the end achieving the goals of the organization so they set a plan they define goals they decide how are we going to achieve these goals and then they have to organize and arrange things and put them in a in a in a structure that helps them so they have to say, okay, if I am a manager and I have five people working under me, I will say, okay, Khalid, you are the one who is going to do this job. Ahmed, you are going to do the, this other job and so on. So they structure and they arrange work. And then they lead. Managers work with people. صح? So any manager of any kind, of any title, in any organization, what they do is that they supervise others they coordinate they oversee and supervise the work of others so they work directly with other people so they have to lead they have to inspire others they have to convince others to do the job and finally they have to control they have to ensure that everything that they have done is being actually taken care of so a manager has set a plan manager has given you you know uh, instructions on how to do things the job here is not done then my job is done no I have to ensure I have to control I have to monitor I have to ensure that everything is going right so is my plan being followed are my instructions being adhered to so these are the things that all managers of any kind do the four main functions of management very important part of this chapter so here again is another nice summary of what all of them mean so planning organizing leading and controlling what is the goal behind all of this what is the purpose behind all of this is the you know achieving the goals of the organization now that we have seen what managers do so we have looked at their functions and we have looked at how are they supposed to perform these functions in terms of efficiency and effectiveness here is a different thought uh, that we get from Mintzberg a management scholar who identified 10 different roles that are supposed to be basically assumed and played by managers what do we mean by roles? Roles are actions, are behaviors, are things that managers are expected to do because of their capacity as managers, because they have been tasked with this, uh, uh, with this uh, 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 charge. So they are in charge of being responsible when it comes to a number of different roles, which are discussed in the next slide. We say that there are three main uh, roles of managers. The first thing is the interpersonal role. This is a very important concept, a very important word. You have to highlight it. You have to look it up. Interpersonal. Interpersonal. So when we say interpersonal role, we, whenever you hear this word interpersonal, you, 
the, the thing that should just pop up in your head is you know relationships with others is dealing with others so uh, uh, when, whenever you uh, find any job advertisement the first thing that they will require as a skill they will say you have to have good interpersonal skills meaning that you have to know how to deal and interact and communicate with others so a manager they they lead they they work with others so of course they have to have good you know people skills they have to have good a good way of communicating with others because they lead others they liaise if you look at this last word over here liaison so they liaise they coordinate they act as a middleman between different managers between different employees so that was the first role interpersonal role the second one is the informational role who is the best person in the organization to ask a question of course it is your supervisor of course it is your manager because the manager no should know about a lot of things if you want to ask about what is the regulations what are the what is, you know what are the regulations and rules of doing a certain thing the manager is the one who should be most knowledgeable if you want to ask uh, you know a question about how a certain job is done the manager should know how to answer so of course a manager is a person who acts like the spokesperson of the organization anything that you have a question about a manager is the person that should give you the answer so they monitor they disseminate they share the information and finally decisional roles of course managers make decisions we mentioned in the uh, you know the different levels of managers how different managers make different decisions and the scale and the scope of those decisions are different according to their levels so of course managers make decisions and they have to in, in you know in order to make those decisions they have to negotiate they have to do some resource allocation they do a lot of things when it comes to making decisions okay so as one of the ex very little example that we mentioned in the lecture if I am a manager and two of my employees want to go for a vacation I cannot let them both go because now I will have no people who work in the department so now I have to decide do I let Khalid go or do, do I let Ahmed go for vacation? So I cannot let them both go, so I have to convince one of them to delay their vacation. So of course this is one decision, one role that managers are expected to have. And for all of you visuals out there, here is a nice visual, a nice graph or exhibit that basically summarizes all these roles. So you have these three categories, the interpersonal role, the informational role, and the decisional role. And under each and every one of these, you have uh, you know, a distinct uh, way of what, is, what kind of behaviors and actions are expected of managers under each and every role. Now let's talk a little about the skills that managers need. So if we were to promote someone to become a manager or if we were to hire someone as a manager, there are certain skills that this person must have in order for them to become a good manager. So the first group of skills are technical skills. And please make sure that you have a good understanding of what technical skills mean. When we say technical skills here, we're not talking about technology. We're not talking about engineering. We're not talking necessarily about computers. When we say technical skills, we, we mean specific skills about a specific topic or subject or field. So knowledge and proficiency about a specific topic. So if we were to hire a marketing manager, he must know a lot of things about marketing, about customers, about sales. This is, these are the technical uh, skills that we require from a marketing manager. So, of course, someone who is going to work as a manager, they must know a lot about their field. They must know a lot about the job. So, technical skills are extremely important uh, for managers. And then human skills. We mentioned before, you know, interpersonal roles. We mentioned that managers lead, so they work with others. And we mentioned how السبب الأول للاستقالة في عالم الوظائف هو 
المدير المباشر so it is very important that managers can deal very well with others they keep good relationships and they have an, you know, an ability to work well with other people good human skills you know dealing with other people communication respect and so on and then finally conceptual skills when here we talk about things like problem solving skills we talk about things like you know uh, uh, analysis we talk about things like making sure that you understand concepts that because we mentioned before nowadays the business environment is so complicated is so complex and for managers to become proficient and good at what they do they, they must have the ability to understand these complex situations and act upon them so three skills three categories of skills that managers need technical skills which means specific knowledge about specific topics human skills dealing with others and then conceptual skills knowing how to deal with complex situations in the business environment now this uh, exhibit or this graph shows the different levels of managers that we have looked at before so lower level managers middle managers and top managers and then like which skill is more important for which level if you will look at you know lower level managers for example they need more technical skills they need less conceptual skills but the you know the thing that attracted my attention most is look at the human skills for all levels uh, they are almost the same at all levels this tells you how important these interpersonal skills are for any manager at any level so we have just discussed the different categories of skills that managers are supposed to have we have seen you know those families of skills things like interpersonal and conceptual skills but here in this exhibit we have an itemized list of the specific skills that are important for managers in specific so uh, let's you know uh, uh, introduce a couple of them so we have things like managing change uh, there's a, a hot field right now in management and in business called change management and because this is you know a hot field and an emerging one because uh, all business environments are now constantly changing and organizations are supposed to be catching up with that change so who are the people responsible for leading and managing that change of course uh, it's the managers uh, other things like managing human capital so some of you are going to study future courses in human resources and you will be looking uh, in depth at uh, what we mean by human capital so these are basically the core skills and abilities that your team has that the people under your supervision have so how are you going to manage this how are you going to leverage as a manager how are you going to leverage these skills for the benefit of your department of your unit and the organization as a whole uh, other things like managing decision making processes for example so uh, a, a huge part of a manager's job is to make decisions sometimes on a daily basis and one wrong decision could have significant implications and could lead to things becoming extremely bad so managers need to have that skill and need to be very skilled at making decisions so these are you know a, a number of different skills that are important for managers look at them in detail and i'm hoping that this will you know make you realize uh, what it needs to become a good manager in terms of skills so we said that one of the things that managers need to be skilled at was managing change so what are some of the major changes that are faced by managers that are faced by organizations in general in the business environment there are huge changes and const, you know constant uh, uh, evolving of events when it comes to the you know to the field of business so technology for example technology is constantly changing and is always rapidly evolving so managers need to be able they must be able to you know ensure that they 
are keeping up with those changes, with the rapid you know, uh, 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 evolution of technology. There's an increased emphasis on ethics, um, things like, uh, you know, how uh, sustainable are your uh, uh, processes and, uh, you know, are you caring for the environment in uh, your uh, organization or not? So, and these are demands that are now being, uh, uh, you know, uh, pressured uh, by society. So you need to be able to respond to them. Also, competitiveness. Things in the business environment are becoming fierce. So, uh, you know, the competition is rising. There are always, you know, new players in the game. So how are you going to keep your customers satisfied? And then finally, changing security threats. So a huge now concept in management is risk management. So how can you manage these risks and uncertainties? Managers have to deal with those uncertainties all the time. So things are becoming you know, much more challenging for managers and they need to be able to know how, you know, to respond to these changes and be able to, uh, you know, take any corrective measures and any precautionary measures in order to keep their organizations successful. Let's take our conversation and our discussion a little deeper. So uh, one of the challenges faced by managers is an increased focus on the customer. So previously, uh, you know, caring for customers was uh, thought to be on the job of only marketing people and customer service people. But nowadays, caring for the customer and focusing on the customer's needs and demands is the job of all people in the in the entire organization, even human resources and finance and all those people who do not deal directly with external customers. So. In, because customers are the reason why the organization exists. Without customers, we will have no organizations. They are the ones who, uh, you know, who 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 generate money uh, for us. This is how we get our profits through our customers. So this is why you know focus on the customer has been increasing. So if we have. Uh, you know, a focus on customers when it comes to managers. So they need to be able to manage these customer relationships. Again, one of the biggest fields nowadays in business is customer relationship management. So it is the responsibility of everyone. Like uh, we will see later, uh, later on in the history of management, how a new concept called total quality management, for example, is uh, you know, this is the responsibility of everyone in the organization, not only the marketing people, not only the customer service people, but every single person in the organization has some partial responsibility in this. So consistent and high quality customer service is absolutely essential. We said also that competition is always rising. So if you do not deliver good service to your customers, they are definitely going to leave you and just go for a competitor. So you need to keep your customers constantly happy. Another major challenge is technology. And you know that technology is changing by the second. Every single minute there's a new development in technology and organizations must adapt to these technologies and must adopt the newest uh, you know, technology so that they can remain competitive in the market and then they can keep up with the customer's need, etc. So sometimes, you know, employees would resist adopting new technologies. Uh, people get used to certain ways of doing things and when you tell them that we are now going to introduce a new software or a new process in the plant, for example, they're not necessarily going to be uh, you know, very happy about it. So the job of a manager here is facilitating this change and make, you know, get people on board, make people accept this change. And also, you know, just because we are, you know, integrating more and more technology in our work processes, it doesn't mean that we should neglect social interactions. Um, Nowadays, a lot of people are working remotely, are working from home using technology. 
So even though we are using more technology, actually social interactions, you know, the interaction between team members, for example, are also becoming uh, uh, more uh, important because without, you know, team collaboration, without the cooperation between team members, basically work is not going to get done. So we need team collaboration and we need those team members to use technologies to facilitate and make this, uh, you know, collaboration and make, you know, interactions more smooth. And of course, we cannot go without, uh, you know, having to mention social media. This is a very important aspect of today's business, whether we like it or not. We have to admit that uh, as a company and as a manager, as an organization, we have to have social media presence and we have to train our managers on how to use social media for the benefit of the organization. So things like Twitter and uh, YouTube and all other types of uh, social media platforms, they can be very helpful for the organization, but at the same time, they pose a huge threat when they are not managed effectively. Uh, they can be helpful because it can be, they can be used to promote a positive image about the company. They can be used to, you know, motivate employees. They can be used to, uh, you know, um, uh, keep customers uh, loyal and committed, but at the same time, if you use them ineffectively by posting, uh, you know, uh, un, um, unprofessional uh, uh, tweets, for example, or by post, you know, sharing any posts posts that the public doesn't like, the public doesn't like it. This is going to definitely result in a huge backlash, and this could destroy the company's reputation, and this could get you in a lot of trouble. So you have to be careful when it comes to how to use social media for professional purposes. Innovation is definitely another major challenge um, for organizations and for managers. And uh, because this is happening because we mentioned that the business environment is constantly changing and customers are changing their preferences and demand all the time. So you have to be able to innovate, to come up with new ideas to explore new uh, areas and territories you have to take risks whenever you you know start a new thing whenever you start a new business for example you have to accept that there there are certain levels of risk involved so you have to be able to do things differently from your competitors otherwise you are not going to be able to keep up with the competition why should I, as a customer, why should I come and, you know, buy these things from you and not from another organization? What, you know, what, what is unique about, the, you know, your offering? So, and this is a huge responsibility on the shoulders of managers because they are the ones who have to motivate employees to become innovative. They have to create an environment that fosters innovation, that accepts you know, uh, new ideas. Otherwise, they are just going to become, you know, obsolete. You will probably hear and encounter this term a lot whenever you are, you know, reading on the topic of management and business in general, sustainability. Everyone is saying that we have to be sustainable. Everyone is saying that our, you know, uh, uh, our organization uh, cares for sustainability. So what is that exactly? It's basically the company's ability to achieve its goals, uh, you know, in a way that encompasses things beyond profit, things beyond the business itself. So it's all about, you know, uh, 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 strategies involving benefits that are e uh, economic, environmental, and social in nature. So what does that mean? So instead of, you know, before organizations were main, mainly concerned with how do we generate profits, that's it, regardless of, uh, you know, uh, of who is going to get hurt in the process. So sometimes uh, it is a lot less costly for an organization to do things that harm the environment because this for them is uh, you know is more profitable but nowadays 
everyone is demanding that organizations change. Everyone is demanding that organizations do things in a more sustainable way. And this is this has proven to be helpful for the or, for organizations themselves. What that means is that you should look, you know, you should plan things in a strategic way. Later on, we will have a chapter on strategic management. And some of you are going to study an entire course on strategic management. So when we talk about, you know, planning and, you know, managing things strategically, we widen our, you know, perspectives. So we, we don't only focus on, you know, losses and profits and that's it. We look into what kind of benefit are we going to, uh, you know, achieve? What kind of value are we going to accomplish for our shareholders, our stakeholders? Uh, you know, and value can be economic, it can be environmental, and it also must always encompass a social component. So how are we helping our societies? How are we, you know, contributing to the, you know, uh, betterment of uh, uh, the economy? How are we, you know, making decisions that are environmentally responsible? And, in, you know, it's always about striking that balance. So we don't want to do things that are very costly for us, for example, and just to save the environment. But at the same time, we don't want to take the short uh, road. So it's... It, it is a this is why it is a challenge because you know striking that balance is uh, you know on managers so they are the ones who have to make those decisions and find a way to be uh, sustainable focusing on employees is definitely a major part of uh, you know the challenges faced by managers more and more companies are realizing that their human resources, that their employees are the most important resource they have. All the ideas come from employees. All the you know, service to customers is provided by employees. So without you know, treating employees uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an effective way and without treating them well, without providing an environment for them that you know, fosters a healthy work environment, that fosters innovation, that fosters uh, you know, justice, uh, you will never be able to succeed as an organization. So, and uh, you know, employees cost you a lot when they leave. It's not only in terms of their salaries, but in terms of their human capital, in terms of the skills that they take with them. So this is why companies are doing a lot nowadays to keep their employees happy and to, you know, do anything that they can in order to keep their employees working for them as long as possible. They don't want them to leave because they have trained them, because they have invested in them, and because these employees possess a lot of great ideas they possess a lot of potential and they can you know do a lot for the benefit of the company so more and more uh, managers are definitely being faced with this challenge of how do they keep employees happy how do they manage their performance how can they motivate them how can they help them how can they lead them One concept that you need to be familiar with is the universality of management. So management is universal. What that means is that, you know, regardless of how big or small or, you know, the type of business that you that the organization is involved in, you need managers and management is needed to ensure that, you know, work processes are being uh, uh, carried out in an effective and an efficient way. So in all organizational areas, you don't only need finance managers, you don't just need marketing managers, you need people who oversee, who supervise, who lead all types of activities within the organization, regardless of how big or small the organization is, regardless of where is it located all around the world, whether it's a government agency, whether it's a private sector, whether it's, uh, you know, an educational uh, institution, all types of organizations require management. All types of organization need people who lead work activities and who inspire, uh, you know, commitment. So this is 
a, a nice visual and exhibit that summarizes the uh, concept of the universality of management. So we mentioned that all sizes, uh, uh, all organization sizes need management. So whether it's small or large, whether you have only 10 people in a small shop, you need a manager, you need a store manager there, or whether it's a big company like Sabic with thousands of people working, then definitely you will require different, uh, you know, numbers and sizes, uh, different numbers and, you know, specializations of managers. Also, all types of organizations, whether it's a for-profit organization or not for-profit organization. So even charity organizations require management. And as I mentioned, whether it's public sector, private sector, education, healthcare, whatever it is, you will definitely need people to manage and lead. And also all organizational levels. So from top to bottom, we have seen that we have first line managers, middle managers, and top managers. So throughout all these levels of the organization, you definitely need management there to ensure that work activities and you know work processes are being uh, carried out effectively and efficiently. And finally, all organizational areas, as we mentioned, we don't just need finance managers just because money is the most you know is is is, is important. We need people to manage people. We need people to manage marketing. We need, need people to manage accounting. We need people to manage the technology and information systems. So across all organizational areas, managers and management in particular is needed. Another concept that you have to accept is that, you know, is, is what is referred to here as the reality of work. So once you graduate, you have you are going to probably work in an organization. And so you have to accept the fact that, you know, to make a living, you have to work. That's the, you know, that's the first idea is that to make a living, to be able to provide for a family, to be able to start a family even, you have to gain a living. So you have to make a living, you have to make money. How do you make money? You either start your own business or you get a job. So when you get a job, you are either going to become a manager or you are going to be managed. So you are going to work with managers. So you have to understand that this is why you study management, because either you are going to be managing others and therefore you have to know how to lead and manage and all those functions and strategies that managers use, or you, since you are going to be working under the supervision of others, so you are going to be managed, studying management and studying what managers do would help you a lot when it comes to understanding how to deal with them, when it comes to improving your relationships with them, when it comes to, uh, you know, making sure that you get, uh, you, know, you know, you make the most benefit out of that relationship and be able to work effectively alongside your managers. So this is a great idea that you have to, you know, be familiar, familiarize yourself with uh, the, the the reality that you have to um, you have to understand what management is, either because you are going to become a manager yourself, or you will be working alongside other managers. And since we talked about managers a lot, let's talk a little about the challenges of being a manager. So in this particular slide, we are going to talk a little about the like the downside of being a manager. So what are some of the, you know, cons, let's say, of being a manager? It can be a thankless job. You know, people are always going to blame managers whether they are right or wrong. And um, oftentimes, uh, managers do not get the appreciation that they deserve. So as sometimes it can be a little frustrating. It can be, it can bring, you know, your spirit down when you do not get the appreciation that you, uh, that you were uh, aiming uh, at when it comes to your team. It can entail and involve a lot of clerical duties. So as a manager, you have to file reports, you have to fill out forms, you have to send out a lot of emails, you have to, you know, these, uh, it involves sometimes a lot of paperwork. So, and this can be a little overwhelming for some people. They are not willing to take on such duties. They, they would say that I would be better off 
you know, being uh, 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 left out without all those uh, responsibilities. Also, managers spend a lot of significant amount of time in meetings. So they are always in meetings with different types of people inside and outside the organization. And this can be a little difficult to manage when it comes to time. And finally, managers often have to deal with a variety of personalities. This is a fact that, you know, the team of people that you're managing as a manager consists and composes of a lot of different people from different backgrounds, different personalities. So this can be a little difficult because it means that you have to adjust the way you, you know, talk to people just to make sure that you are being accommodating of all those styles. Just because, you know, being a manager has its own challenges, it doesn't mean that it's not also a rewarding job. It's not a job without its benefits. It's not a job without its rewards. So when you are a manager, you are responsible for creating a productive work environment. That means that you are the person who is responsible for implementing changes. You are the person who is responsible for transforming things. You are going to directly observe and see how your actions contribute to changing things for the better in the organization. You can also get recognition and status in the organization and in the community. You will be regarded as a highly respectable professional in the field because of your status, because of your responsibilities as a manager. Your accomplishments are going to be recognized. And then also attractive compensation in the form of salaries, bonuses, and stock options. What that means is that, you know, the more you advance in the hierarchy, the more you, uh, you know, the more responsibilities you have, the, the higher you climb in the ladder, this comes with its own benefits, with, with its own monetary benefits, things like more money. A manager makes more uh, money. He, ha he, he or she has a higher salary. They receive, you know, higher bonuses. They have other benefits. Sometimes, you know, as a man, because you become a manager, uh, you are going to get a company car. You are going to get, uh, you know, tickets. You know, it, it comes, it, the job comes with its own perks. So being a manager is definitely challenging, but it, it's not without its rewards as well. And finally, to conclude our chapter, this is a, an exhibit, a visual that summarizes both the rewards and the challenges that a manager uh, faces and receives. So when it comes to rewards, uh, uh, you know, working with a variety of people is definitely a reward because you gain this uh, exposure to, you know, different people, to different, uh, you know, perspectives. But at the same time, it, you know, an aspect of it can be can be challenging because you have to uh, you know adjust your style when it comes to how to motivate these types of people etc uh, so i would advise you to go through this list in detail and try to you know connect the dots and understand that a manager's job is absolutely challenging but at the same time it's not without its rewards thank you so much for listening and i'll see you on the next chapter